I think it was Mark Twain who once said, loyalty to the country always, loyalty to the government only when it deserves it. <laughs> The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. When it became apparent in March, when Dr. Albarde spoke before the UN Security Council and pointed out that the country that they were referring to was in fact Niger, then that became apparent that they were talking about something about which I had very specific information. My natural inclination, however, was not to go and write a newspaper article. My natural inclination was to go and talk to my government, and so I did. I spoke to the State Department. I spoke to people who were personally very close to Condi Rice. I went up to the House um, Intelligence Oversight Committee, spoke to their staff, and I went to the Senate Intelligence Committee and spoke to their staff as well. And my message to all of them was the same. When the President spoke about this, misspoke. And it's a fundamental mistake. In June, of 2003, the National Security Advisor, Dr. Rice, appeared on Meet the Press, and in response to the question about whether the U.S. government knew anything about this uranium sale, she responded, perhaps somebody in the bowels of the agency knew something about this, but nobody in my circle. Now, I knew that to be a falsehood. The administration was never going to admit it made a mistake unless they were confronted. So that's when it became apparent it had to be a direct, uh, a direct confrontation, had to be under my signature. The immediate effect was Ari Fleischer came on and said uh, to the press that the 16 words, those words referring to um, uh, uranium yellow cake sales from Niger to Iraq, did not rise to the level of inclusion in the State of the Union address. What was unexpected was that the White House would then turn around and try and destroy me by destroying my wife. Whatever we suffered was nothing compared to what the country suffered and what particularly those who serve in the armed services have suffered. And we're, we're under no illusion about that. The bottom line is when I wrote this article uh, seven years ago, nobody was willing to challenge the administration on uh, the suggestion that perhaps it had misstated the case for war. Now, uh, very, very few people from mainstream politics will begin any comment on the Iraq war by saying anything other than we were misled into a war of choice. <laughs>